this weekend. Scott Wright, the Oklahoman, covers Oklahoma State. We appreciate his time. He joins us on 365 Sports. Scott, thank you for the time today. So uh, was the, the staff, the stories, the promotions with Duffy and whoever, uh, that made sense. But the, the new co-defensive coordinator came out of kind of, was that out of nowhere? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, even even those of us tied into the to program somewhat um, sort of had been hearing that, that Gundy was going to wait till after the uh, the February first signing date uh, before he before he made any moves, and um, then all of a sudden yesterday, a little before noon, it uh, it, it pops, and so we uh, we had to jump to work and start learning all we could about Gannon University and Emporia State and. Uh, all the places that uh, uh, that Brian Nardo had been, so uh, made it made for a long day yesterday. Well, was Emporia State was Eric Williams. Who are the Cowboys? Is Emporia State? Leon Lett. Leon Lett. Thank you. I believe yeah, Leon, Leon Lett. Lett. Yeah. Way way back in the day, uh, Scott. So uh, it's been a weird off season for Oklahoma State, at least outside uh, perception. Is that what would you? Is it weird for them inside? Is Mike Gundy having to? to change anything about himself, the way he's approaching things, or is it more just this is college football now and Oklahoma State's uh, kind of on a weird transfer cycle? Uh, no, there's definitely a little bit of both. Uh, mm -hmm. The way that last season ended, um, there was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of discomfort around around the program and, and things that had to be adjusted. So there was, uh, there was work that had to be done internally, um, you know, not, not only reacting to the players who were leaving, but – and, and you know, and, and going through all the recruiting process of, of getting new guys in, and, uh, but but definitely assessing how they were running their program and uh, how they were treating the uh, the NIL process, and um, you know uh, how they were connecting with their players. Um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of important behind the scenes things that uh, that they really had to assess and uh, and make sure that uh, that they were going in the right direction as a program. So um, yeah, it's been. Uh, um, you know, I, I'm sure that internally it doesn't feel quite as crazy as it might look from the outside. Uh, but I mean, they had 16 scholarship guys, several of whom were starters, leave in the portal. So, um, you know, they got 13 new guys coming in at, the, at this point. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot of turnover for a college football team to have to deal with. And obviously the, uh, the, the defense has changed that's coming as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely been a, a weird offseason so far. Scott, uh, part of that offseason is, is change at quarterback. Uh, so it's kind of a two-parter here, um, whichever you'd like to take first. But thoughts on Alan Bowman uh, and the addition there from Michigan and, and obviously Texas Tech before that. But also the departure of Spencer Sanders. That seems to be kind of you know, cloudy on exactly what unfolded on his end or Oklahoma State's end. So could you kind of just paint the picture there as far as the quarterback spot and, and what's happened this offseason? Yeah, I'll start with Sanders because that's uh, obviously the, uh, the the more confusing of the two situations, and 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 I still don't feel like the entire story has come to light. Obviously, there've been uh, there've been uh, multiple reports now of of you know his decision to go in the portal and then and then sort of backtracking, wanting to get back with the program uh, after a few practices during bowl season. Um, you know, then you have uh, um, you know there were there were talks of of a pretty significant NIL package that uh, that. Um, was uh, was going to be offered, and then and then you know Mike Gundy kind of kind of shut things down. Um, so there's been a lot of talk, and I don't, and I like I said, Sanders hasn't talked uh, about this situation yet, uh, and he might not. Uh, but I still think that there's some stuff on his side of the story, um, you know, whether it's positive or negative, uh, that has impacted this. And then for him to uh, you know to end up at a place that has not only a returning starter, but that it already picked up a quarterback out of the transfer portal and a, and a young guy, Walker Howard, um, felt very odd. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think the, the, uh, the Spencer Sanders saga is completely over. Obviously, obviously Oklahoma State has closed the book on that. Uh, but I think there's going to be uh, some, uh, some further chapters that, uh, that unravel um, as, uh, as things go forward for him. Uh, then with, with Alan Bowman, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, being a, a big 12 guy, I, I, Followed his career a bit. Uh, I've seen him in person twice, and uh, and he threw for uh, like almost 800 yards in the two games that uh, that he cut, that he played here, uh, Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater. So, um, you know, Oklahoma State fans should be pretty excited about about his track record in Stillwater. But um, obviously, still some big questions. You know, he had injury issues when he was at Tech. 
um, then goes to Michigan and, and he's the third stringer for a couple of years. And uh, so definitely going to be a period of, of knocking the rust off. And, um, you know, obviously when he's healthy, he's, he, he seems to be really talented, um, you know, 67% completion percentage for his career. Um, you know, Oklahoma State hasn't had a guy uh, do that for a single season as the starter since uh, since Brandon Whedon back in 2011. So, um, yeah, you know, there's uh, there's some definite positives to uh, to what he's bringing. Doesn't have the running ability of Spencer Sanders, obviously. So the offense will look a little bit more like uh, you know the, the Brandon Whedon, Mason Rudolph days um, in terms of what they uh, what they like to do. But um, you know, it looks like a uh, looks like a good fit and ideal for what. Uh, Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy wanted to do. Scott, do you ever get the feeling that Mike Gundy may get tired of all this soon? College football doesn't seem to be made in the image that he was well, definitely not, but especially not in one that Mike Gundy would, he doesn't seem to be adaptable to that level to me. Uh, it's it's tough to tell because, you know, back in, back in November, he, um, you know, made some comments uh, about how, uh, you know, he's not a big portal guy and, and, um, you know, a lot of people uh, kind of took that for, for more than what he was saying when he was really saying kind of what you're addressing is that he doesn't like what the portal represents and what it means to college football. Um, but then he, you know, as soon as things start going bad, he goes out and, and finds 13 guys on the, in the portal and, and, and brings in, uh, you know, new, new players right off the bat. So um, it is, he is slow to adapt. I will, I will say that's fair. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's hard to know with him because, um, you know, he's always been a guy that says he's not going to do this in, until he's uh, old and gray. And um, then last uh, uh, last season, he comes out and says he could see himself doing it 10 more years. So, uh, you know, and he's, he's 55 now. So, um, you know, it's just, it's really hard to know with him. He's, um, you know, he's, he's got, he's got his own bun, uh, drum beat up in that head and, and you just don't know what exactly is going on up there all the time. Yeah, there's, that's a good way to put it. He seemed to be pretty much at ease, of course, two seasons or last season, uh, not 2022. They were really good, and there's a reason to be that way despite the gut-wrenching loss in the Big 12 championship game. Dominic Richardson is now at Baylor. He made that decision. In fact, it was the week that Baylor was about to play their bowl game in that the horrible conditions at Fort Worth. The, does he make enough people miss, in your opinion? Is that something he needs to work on, a plow horse? What are they getting with him? Yeah, I mean, he's definitely a physical runner that uh, that is drawn to contact. It would it would be a huge boost to his his career and his longevity as a running back uh, if he could uh, could learn to make people miss a little bit better. Um, now he's uh, he's really solid, does what he does well, uh, a decent pass blocker, understands those concepts. So um, he's a, he's a solid player. Not not a lot of flash except for uh, for those opportunities when he uh, he gets head up with a, a linebacker or a safety he can he can put some guys on their butts but um, you know he's he is he is more of a grinded out type of guy a uh, good short yardage guy um, you know I at, at one point this season uh, you know he was averaging around uh, around 4.2 yards a carry and hadn't had a carry over uh, 20 yards all season so um, and I can't remember how that finished out. I, I don't know that he ever did have a carry over 20 yards all season. Um, even though he had some really productive games, went for 131 yards against Arizona State early in the season. But um, you know, not the uh, the big breakaway type runs. He's a he's a grinded out type of guy, and and, and probably a good change of pace for uh, for for what Baylor has. You know, we brought up the quarterback coming in who was at Tech and and we're Bowman. Is that his job, or do you feel like the competition is going to be more than just the fact he's the most experienced? You know, I, I'm I'm curious to see what they say. Uh, in terms of what they say, they might say that it's an open competition going into spring, uh, just uh, just for the optics of that for uh, for the young guys. Uh, but I really think it's it's Bowman's job to lose. I don't see them handing this job uh, to uh, to one of the young guys right now. The whole point of them going out and trying to find a guy. They, they specifically wanted a guy with one year left mm -hmm. uh, when they were shopping on the transfer portal. And, and it was for this purpose to give these young guys like Garrett Rangel, Gunnar Gundy, and their new guys in floors time to, uh, to, to become a little bit more seasoned and be ready for a, a really good quarterback competition going into 24. All right. Uh, anything, Craig, Paul, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Hope to have you down the road, Scott. Good stuff. Absolutely. Anytime, fellas. Scott Wright uh, from the Oklahoma and covers Oklahoma State on the uh, additions and 